really fuels that. And I think it's coming out in some of the stuff you're hearing Christians talk about these days. And, and the instinct, I guess what worries me more, more than anything else is the instinct I'm hearing that, uh, you know, we, we've got to, we, we've got to, well, for instance, you know, I, I've had several people criticize a lot of my language because they say I'm culturally, uh, um, I'm going to put this, uh, pessimistic, I guess the best way to put it. Well, it's because I've read Dave the book. Dave Shiflett's book, Exodus. Yes. Really, well, he that, just describes right. you as… Yeah. Somebody who's pretty much written off the culture. Yeah, it was fascinating because he went to do this story on conservative Christians, and he… he, he, he and he, Richard Land said he was more optimistic than you just because he was older, and he had seen some things happen. You know, like the civil rights movement succeed in a way you hadn't seen it succeed. And perhaps yeah, that's well, all I can say is any, well, I don't, anyone who thinks that a reading of human history is that human culture is getting better and better, <laughs> I think has to define that in ways that I'm, I'm not comfortable with. Now, that, Richard has a point when you mention this. There, there, there are gains here and there, but what, what came with that? In other words, what, or at the same time, not necessarily linked to it, but what else happened? I mean, that's why I said there's no golden era. I don't want to go back to the 50s because even though people knew what marriage was, uh, there were white and, uh, and Negro water fountains, as they were labeled then. Uh, and so, you know, when you start looking at this kind of thing, you have to say there is, no, there is no ground for cultural optimism here, either going backward or forward. And I think, you know, you have eschatological heresies involved in this, uh, a confusion of, of this world and the world to come. Well, I think this is a good point then for us to launch into you preaching the, these uh, affirmations and denials to us. Mm -hmm. So, if, if you just want to take your document, um, you all should have copies of it. Al, I think you should, it's short enough, I think you should just read through it and pause at the end of each of the articles and see if any of the brothers want to just quickly throw anything in. Because it's specifically, this, this is not meant to be the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed. This is a statement just by the four of us uh, of things that we want to affirm and deny that touch on the gospel that we think are relevant in the United States given the situation that we see right now. Is that a fair? Right. That's it. Yeah. If, if there's an analogy to this, it's more like Barman. Yeah, the Barman Declaration. Yeah. 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 Should we read the prologue? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Good. We are brothers in Christ united in one great cause, to stand together for the gospel. We are convinced that the gospel of Jesus Christ has been misrepresented, misunderstood, and marginalized in many churches and among many who claim the name of Christ. Compromise of the gospel has led to the preaching of false gospels, the seduction of many minds and movements, and the weakening of the church's gospel witness. As in previous moments of theological and spiritual crisis in the church, we believe that the answer to this confusion and compromise lies in a comprehensive recovery and reaffirmation of the gospel, and in Christians banding together in gospel churches that display God's glory in this fallen world. We are also brothers united in deep concern for the church and the gospel. This concern is specifically addressed to certain trends within the church today. We are concerned about the tendency of so many churches to substitute technique for truth, therapy for theology, and management for ministry. We are also concerned that God's glorious purpose for Christ's church is often eclipsed in concern by so many other issues, programs, technologies, and priorities. Furthermore, confusion over crucial questions concerning the authority of the Bible, the meaning of the gospel, and the nature of truth have itself have gravely weakened the church in terms of its witness, its work, and its identity. We stand together for the gospel and for a full and gladdening recovery of the gospel in the church. Yes. We are convinced that such a recovery will be evident in the form of faithful gospel churches, each mm -hmm. bearing witness to the faithful witness to the glory of God and the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Ligon, any, any comment you don't have to, but you're welcome to. CJ, anything? Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to say on that one thing, Al, that management for ministry, I mean, you just heard the reaction of the brothers when you, when you read that phrase, because that is so much of what we hear taught in schools and right. seminars and conferences. Right. And um, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the brothers who's here with us, John Harden, who's an intern at our church, is doing his PhD at University of Maryland on business practices in the mm -hmm. church. Ooh and the influence of business on the church. If you want to know more about that or you have information you want to leave for him about that, mm. leave it at the nine marks table for John Harden. It's an important right. topic to work on. Mm. All right, Article 1, and these are in the form of affirmations and denials. Uh, some of you will remember the International Council on Biblical Inerrancy statements that were similar. 
Article 1, we affirm that the sole authority for the church is the Bible, verbally inspired, inerrant, infallible, and totally sufficient and trustworthy. We deny that the Bible is a mere witness to the divine revelation or that any portion of Scripture is marked by error, incompleteness, or the effects of human sinfulness. Any comments? Keep going. We affirm that the authority and sufficiency of Scripture extends to the entire Bible and therefore that the Bible is our final authority for all doctrine and practice. We deny that any portion of the Bible is to be used in an effort to deny the truthfulness or trustworthiness of any other portion. We further deny any effort to identify a canon within the canon or, for example, to set the words of Jesus against the writings of Paul. The final statement so important today uh, where within evangelicalism precisely that is happening. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and the suggestion that promise and fulfillment, and Lig, you hit this so well this morning, mm. promise and fulfillment does not mean nullification or even clarification, you know, as, as if what we have here is clouding up God's bad reputation in the Old mm. Testament. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In, uh, in that Clean article that on the atonement that's in Christianity today that you all got copies of, that's one of the main things that I was struck by as people who call themselves evangelical mm. were clearly either denying the importance or at least relativizing the importance of words in the New Testament mm. uh, if they were not said by Jesus. Mm. And that canon within a canon is, yeah. a, is yeah. a way to undermine the very thing the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit inspired for the edification mm. of the church. Beware the red letter New Testament. Mm. 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 If three. that implies these mm. words are more important That's right. than any other word. Mm. Article 3, we affirm that truth ever remains a central issue for the church and that the church must resist the allure of pragmatism and postmodern conceptions of truth as substitutes for obedience to the comprehensive truth claims of Scripture. We deny that truth is merely a product of social construction or that the truth of the gospel can be expressed or grounded in anything less than total confidence in the veracity of the Bible, the historicity of biblical events, and the ability of language to convey understandable truth in sentence form. We further deny that the church can establish its ministry on a foundation of pragmatism, current marketing techniques, mm -hmm. or contemporary cultural fashions. Right. Amen. Right. Article 4. We affirm the centrality of expository preaching in the church and the urgent need for a recovery of biblical exposition and the public reading of Scripture in worship. We deny that God-honoring worship can marginalize or neglect the ministry of the Word as manifested through exposition and public reading. We further deny that a church devoid of true biblical preaching can survive as a gospel church. Yeah, Al, explain the verb survive there. Yeah, the word survive is, is there because uh, there are churches that may linger on a biblical basis that is no longer mm. nourished, mm. but it will eventually be a deposit that is depleted. Yeah. And certainly if you are in a church and you feel there's a need for serious reform of that church, brothers, this is your way forward. Mm. It is taking God's Word and mm. preaching and teaching mm. God's Word. Article 5, we affirm that the Bible reveals God to be infinite in all His perfections and thus truly omniscient, omnipotent, timeless, and self-existent. We further affirm that God possesses perfect knowledge of all things past, present, and future, including all human thoughts, acts, and decisions. We deny that the God of the Bible is in any way limited in terms of knowledge or power or any other perfection or attribute, or that God has in any way limited His own perfections. Just, we, we live in a day where it's common uh, to speak of God limiting mm -hmm. Himself in the exercise of his attributes, and, uh, and, and so undermining a full biblical view of who God is and what He does. Article 6. Article 6, we affirm that the doctrine of the Trinity is a Christian essential, bearing witness to the ontological reality of the one true God in three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each of the same substance and perfections. We deny the claim that the Trinity is not an essential doctrine or that the Trinity can be understood in merely economic or functional categories. Yeah, there is an amazing rush to Unitarianism in so much evangelicalism these days, as mm. even, you know, popular preachers are mm. undermining, and academic theologians are talking about the Trinity just as a way that we can speak of God, that we 
construct to speak of God. Well, I was listening to a God as community. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to a rather well-known preacher on the radio as I was driving the other day, and he expressed a perfect modalistic heresy, mm-hmm. an almost classic form. And, and I know he has no idea what he just did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Article 7. We affirm that Jesus Christ is true God and true man in perfect, undiluted, and unconfused union throughout His incarnation and now eternally. We also affirm that Christ died on the cross as a substitute for sinners, as a sacrifice for sin, and as a propitiation of the wrath of God towards sin. We affirm the death, burial, and bodily resurrection of Christ as essential to the gospel. We further affirm that Jesus Christ is Lord over His church and that Christ will reign over the entire cosmos in fulfillment of the Father's gracious purpose. We deny that the substitutionary character of Christ's atonement for sin can be compromised or denied without serious injury or even repudiation of the gospel. We further deny that Jesus Christ is visible only in weakness rather than in power, lordship, or royal reign, or conversely, that Christ is visible only in power and never in weakness. Mm -hmm. So many of those sentences are, are directly addressing the situation in evangelicalism today yes. with regard to the denigration of the person and work of Christ. Yes. And I'd recommend that all pastors read Mark's article in the most recent issue of Christianity Today, which I think was given to everybody. Thank you for writing that article. Yeah. Thank you for the work and outstanding research that went work. into that article. And thanks to CT for publishing That's it. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Article 8, we affirm that salvation is all of grace and that the gospel is revealed to us in doctrines that most faithfully exalt God's sovereign purpose to save sinners and in His determination to save His redeemed people by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, to His glory alone. We deny that any teaching, theological system, or means of presenting the gospel that denies the centrality of God's grace as His gift of of unmerited favor to sinners in Christ can be considered true doctrine. Any comment on that one? God's grace is sovereign. Yes, amen. And And it is a great name for a ministry. (laughs) (laughs) We didn't know someone was going to try to brand it. (laughs) (laughs) Article 9. (laughs) We affirm that the gospel of Jesus Christ is God's means of bringing salvation to His people, that sinners are commanded to believe the gospel and that the church is commissioned to preach and teach the gospel to all nations. We deny that evangelism can be reduced to any program, technique, or marketing approach. We further deny that salvation can be separated from repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Alan, you want to say anything about the importance of this article? Well, I think there's there's several things here. One of them is that we celebrate God's purpose to save. Mm -hmm. That is the the affirmative here. And uh, the, the Missionary Commission but we're not for programmatic efforts that are out to produce, oh. you know, statistics. We're, we're out to see sinners come to faith in Christ. There will be statistics about that, but what we have in our managerial mindedness of modern evangelicalism is, uh, is that we live and die by statistics. And I think that second statement in the denial is important. Yeah, that's where I'm headed here. Okay. The, uh, the fact is this v- makes very clear that there is no regeneration. Uh, with the gift of faith that does not issue forth in repentance. And uh, there is no Christianity without repentance. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, John MacArthur, yeah. for your great book, yeah, The Gospel According yeah. to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Thank Amen. you, brother, so much for that. Amen. Amen. Article 10, we affirm that salvation Amen. comes to those who truly believe and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We deny that there is salvation in any other name or that saving faith can take any form other than conscious belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and His saving acts. Amen. Do you want to ask any question about infant salvation or make any point? Well, we talked about uh, the phrase, other than conscious belief in Mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ, and Al and I have both actually written on the issue of of the the issue of infant salvation, which is a major debate, of Mm -hmm. course, uh, amongst evangelicals at the end of the 19th century in high mortality rates, et cetera. 
Baptists and Presbyterians are traditionally right, right together on that issue. And the point here is the denial of these various types of universalisms, right. uh, that uh, anonymous Christians and uh, right. things of this nature. You want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I think uh, the, uh, the issue of anonymous Christianity, you know, of course, offered most classically by the Catholic the theologian Karl Rahner, now embraced as, as a fairly mainstream Catholic understanding, it has really been very attractive to squishy evangelicals. Mm -hmm. Mm. Who uh, believe it offers, uh, but I repeat myself, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, to, to those who are kind of looking for a way to find some back door, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, I think Romans 10 is just as classic, yeah. uh, you know, a statement as Paul can give, so, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of Christ. So, brother, what do you do about C.S. Lewis? I think C.S. Lewis is an example of a man with an incredible gift for writing and for mental clarity whose, whose lack of adequate theological training and, uh, and rigor shows up in many of his writings. And specifically… I think he was wrong. And sp <laughs> specifically on this point… Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. he, even in his great <laughs> article on Christian apologetics, he'll, he'll sneak this point in. It's just, just mm -hmm. X that phrase out, that, that three or four sentences and move on to the next yeah. thing. And in the Chronicles yeah. of Narnia. Yeah, and yes. I've, written, I've written an article on Lewis making the mistake when he talks about the Tao. He, he's really talking about common grace, but he confuses that as saving grace. Mm. And, and that's the mistake. He doesn't mm -hmm. understand that common grace does not bring one to the cross and to conscious faith yeah. in Christ. Yeah. Great. Let's keep going. But God is not without a witness. We would agree right. with that. Sure. It's just not a saving witness. Yeah. yeah where Christ is not proclaimed. We always have to footnote everything, just to be clear. <laughs> affirm and deny. All right, uh, Article 12, we affirm that sinners are justified… Article 11. 11. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We affirm the continuity of God's saving purpose and the Christological unity of the covenants. We further affirm a basic distinction between law and grace and that the true gospel exalts Christ's atoning work as the consummate and perfect fulfillment of the law. We deny that the Bible presents any other means of salvation than God's gracious acceptance of sinners in Christ. Amen. It's, a, it's really well worded. Yes. We, we really have gone after several things yeah. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. We affirm that sinners are justified only through faith in Christ and that justification by faith alone is both essential and central to the gospel. We deny that any teaching that minimizes, denies, or confuses justification by faith alone can be considered true to the gospel. We further deny that any teaching that separates regeneration and faith is a true rendering of the gospel. Thirteen, we affirm that the righteousness of Christ is imputed to believers by God's decree alone and that this righteousness imputed to the believer through faith alone is the only righteousness that saves. We deny that such righteousness is earned or deserved in any manner, is infused within the believer to any degree, or is realized in the believer through anything other than faith alone. We affirm that the shape of Christian discipleship is congregational and that God's purpose is evident in faithful gospel congregations, each displaying God's glory and the marks of authentic ecclesiology. We deny that any Christian can truly be a faithful disciple apart from the teaching, discipline, fellowship, and accountability of a congregation of fellow disciples organized as a gospel church. We further deny that the Lord's Supper can faithfully be administered apart from the right practice of church discipline. Al, in the, in the denials, we're not saying that a church planter or a missionary is in sin. No, if that church planter or missionary is in faithful accountability to a local congregation. In other words, there are sending congregations, but we don't have a notion of lone ranger, you know, ambassadors. You know, no one's buying a gospel franchise and heading out alone into the desert. Uh, this is a, it is churches planting churches and uh, churches sending. Article 15, we affirm that evangelical congregations are to work together in humble and voluntary cooperation and that the spiritual fellowship of gospel congregations bears witness to the unity of the church and the glory of God. We deny that loyalty to any denomination or fellowship of churches can take precedence over the claims of truth and faithfulness to the gospel. Does the PCA go along with that? Yes. Yeah. So does we better too, the SBC. <laughs> this is a, a, a statement that was written because of two things. Number one, 
you have the, the, the liberal Protestants gathering together into conciliar organizations that we believe betray the gospel. Well, we, we believe a lot of those mainline denominations themselves That's are right. organizations that have betrayed the gospel. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even though there may be some gospel churches within oh, them. Oh, certainly, certainly. But we also want to warn denominationalists, of which most of us are in one form or another, even those who think they aren't, uh, mm. uh, <laughs> that, you know, one begins to breed a logic of denominational loyalty rather than of gospel priority. That's always a danger. And can I just say, since we're ribbing CJ a little bit, one of the things I love about Sovereign Grace churches that is so distinctive about them is that they're not distinctive at all about being Sovereign Grace. They're distinctive about being so deeply Christian mm -hmm. in the character, the, the Christ-likeness of the character, the spirit, the humility mm -hmm. that I've seen among uh, our brothers and sisters in the Sovereign Grace churches is moving to me. Mm -hmm. And it bears testimony to the gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would encourage you guys to, uh, to study those brothers and sisters who are here around you serving you, who are fellow pastors with you here, and try to learn what you can about the way we can in our own churches imitate more of the Spirit of Christ. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Kind of you and meaningful. Sixteen. Read this, we, one, read this one slow. We <laughs> affirm. <laughs> Just want every we pastor have, to feel the full effect. <laughs> we affirm that the Scripture reveals a pattern of complementary order between men and women and that this order is itself a testimony to the gospel, yes. even as it is the gift of our Creator and Redeemer. We also affirm that all Christians are called to service within the body of Christ, and that God has given to both men and women important and strategic roles within the home, the church, and the society. We further affirm that the teaching office of the church is assigned only to those men who are called of God in fulfillment of the biblical teachings, and that men are to lead in their homes as husbands and fathers who fear and love God. We deny that the distinction of roles between men and women revealed in the Bible is evidence of mere cultural conditioning or a manifestation of male oppression or prejudice against women. We also deny that this biblical distinction of roles excludes women from meaningful ministry in Christ's kingdom. We further deny that any church can confuse these issues without damaging its witness to the gospel. Amen. So, are you saying there cannot be evangelical egalitarians? I'm saying you cannot adopt these positions without damaging one's witness to the gospel. So, Lig, are we saying that, that you cannot be an evangelical egalitarian? Uh, we, are, we are saying that… <laughs> You want, you want we, yes or no? Yes. Well, of no, course, I'm trying to of help us no, be clear with no, what I'm not saying. Of course, there are evangelical right. egalitarians exactly. that we love with all our hearts and, and revere. And those and of you who are here and are that, you're very welcome. Exactly. We're no place we'd rather you be than right yeah. here. We, right. we do but not… But we want to meet with you later. <laughs> yes, right. yes. Uh, yes. We, so we definitely want them to change. We do not yeah. believe that the discipleship of the church is served by a compromise of the Bible's teaching on that issue. Right. Yeah. Article yes. 17. And I think the challenge here is to make sure that this is applied in the local church and throughout yeah. the local church. So as pastors, what, what we so. must do is clarify, cultivate, and celebrate the teaching on biblical manhood and womanhood mm -hmm. and make sure that we are transferring it through every ministry and to every individual, assuming that all those present in our church are breathing feminist air, uh, either cultural or sadly evangelical. Mm -hmm. Clarify, cultivate, celebrate. And yep. he's, he's been to some kind of like uh, Baptist three-point alliterative <laughs> seminar. <laughs> yeah, you can do no, it. I, I haven't, but is that a compliment? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it didn't feel like one. That's <laughs> <laughs> Article 17. Yeah. But we must move on. Okay. <laughs> We affirm that God calls His people she to… She who must be obeyed. Yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. We affirm that God calls His people to display His glory in the reconciliation of the nations within the church, and that God's pleasure in this reconciliation is evident in the gathering of believers from every tongue and tribe and people and nation. We acknowledge that the staggering magnitude of injustice against mm -hmm. African Americans in the name of the gospel presents a special opportunity for displaying the repentance, forgiveness, and restoration promised in the gospel. We further affirm that evangelical Christianity in America bears a unique responsibility 
to demonstrate this reconciliation with our African-American brothers and sisters. We deny that any church can accept racial prejudice, discrimination, or division without betraying the gospel. Amen. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have a wonderful opportunity to make yes. the gospel clear to this culture of ours. Yes. You know, whether you're here uh, as an African-American or a, a Caucasian-American or, or whatever you're here as, in our country, we have a tremendous opportunity to display the gospel by working on that issue. And we have an incredible burden of inheriting mm. a legacy mm. that, uh, that still haunts us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, even the fact that for our friendship, we've got the four of us sitting here as four white guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would, I would love if we had a, a, a something that's going to look a little bit more like heaven, mm-hmm. you know, sitting right here. I don't think that's bad acculturation like you were talking about in your talk. I think that's Revelation, the book of Revelation mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. what we would like to see more and more of a foretaste in in our, mm-hmm. in our local congregations. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We affirm that our only sure and confident hope is in the sure and certain promises of God. Thus, our hope is an eschatological hope grounded in our confidence that God will bring all things to consummation in a manner that will bring greatest glory to His own name, greatest preeminence to His Son, and greatest joy for His redeemed people. We deny that we are to find ultimate fulfillment or happiness in this world, or that God's ultimate purpose is for us to find merely a more meaningful and fulfilling life in this fallen world. We further deny that any teaching that offers health and wealth as God's assured promises in this life can be considered a true gospel. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Let's read the passages. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. Who, you want to read them, CJ? Why don't you read them, CJ? No, you should have that honor because you have devoted the most time to this document. Amen. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Amen. Then from Revelation 14, 6 through 7, Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Amen. 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 Now, why this document? Why was this document necessary? Well, when we met together, and uh, John Piper and John MacArthur were a part of this discussion, yes. uh, the six of us trying to talk about how we could be clear here at this event about right. what we were and were not saying, right. there were some references made back to the ICBI document. At least people left that meeting knowing what they had said. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things we want to be true here, well, and yet… I, I, think, I think John MacArthur told us to do this. Well, he actually, I'm getting there. What he did was, at his conference, he announced that we were going to have this. But, but two months before, he had told yeah, us in private. That's true. That's true. But we wanted to make sure that he was proved to be a true prophet. That's right. And we agreed. We, <laughs> we, we had, we had talked not, about right. doing it. That's right. Not sure but, he's comfortable with that. But Mark, Mark and I were, yes, Mark and I were sitting together. At, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Oh, oh no, yeah. you can speak at our church without being a true prophet because we would recognize right. you as what? Well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to have that designation here. You could have it with us. None of us wanted to get here and tell John MacArthur it hadn't been done. Yeah. So it's but, done. But, the, but behind that is a concern that John Piper has been expressing repeatedly, mm-hmm. uh, and, and that is we live in an age with a massive anti-doctrinal right. spirit mm-hmm. exactly. in Christianity, and the gospel right. is not a slogan for us. 
it, there's truth content to it. And we want to be clear that we weren't just here to rally around a slogan, mm -hmm, that right. if we're going to talk about being together for the gospel, we're going to know what it means. Right. So we wanted to put that on the table. Right. Yes. Amen. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And this has been a major this has been a major concern we've shared as well. We live in a culture of affirmation. Right. But there's really no way to affirm the gospel without concomitant denials. Right. That's right. You know, we really have to say simultaneously, this means this and not that. Well, right. and even this will be misunderstood. There, there will be people who will take sure. phrases and say, oh, they didn't say this or they right. said this. So there's no way you can finally do it. But I think uh, Al mainly wrote this. We sent in suggestions. We said, deal with this. Make sure you have this. But the brother wordsmith, did, and then all of us worked on it together uh, on the basis of that. But yes. Al, you, you've done a great job yes, really you have. putting into words you, what yes. we exactly. yeah. want to say. So thank you, brother, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think it's important to note as well that this, I think, was done from my perspective uh, humbly to serve, not self-righteously to ridicule, but it is absolutely necessary because of the doctrinal indifference, the doctrinal avoidance, the lack of doctrinal precision that so characterizes American evangelicalism. But taking that one step further, it really becomes for the four of us a further instrument of holding ourselves accountable. Mm -hmm. I mean, we signed this thing, yes. mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we've talked about 3, them for years. 3,000 copies of it. Yes. <laughs> we've talked about them for years, and we've each written our own things, yeah. but to write something in one voice, I think, was a good discipline for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. So, we hope you brothers will talk about this over lunch. We hope you'll find it useful, maybe a useful thing to, uh, to challenge some of your own thinking or the thinking of other church leaders, and that you'll be encouraged by this document mm -hmm. uh, in the truth. So, sir. Sir, John. John MacArthur has a word. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. I'd be honored if you signed it. John MacArthur has asked if he and John Piper could also sign this. Yes. RC's looking all dog face. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you disagree with any of this that you wouldn't want to sign it? We would love to if you agree with us. Yes. Well, of course. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Then we will, we will see what we can do about that. Excellent. And Matt, Matt Schmucker and Paul Medler will now be figuring this out. <laughs> all right. We need to break for lunch. Uh, hold on just a moment before you go. Um, I, I want us to pray before we dismiss. Uh, and then if you'll remember to take your stuff and be back here about uh, 2.20, about 2.20. So you have a couple of hours, all right? Al, would you lead us in prayer? Sure. Let's stand together. Mm. Our Father, we come together re recognizing that we are even now surrounded by such riches, yes. riches in friends, mm. inestimable riches in truth. Yes riches in Christ. Mm. Father, you have shown your care for us in giving us such a place in which to meet, giving us the provision we need even for this food. We pray that we will be nourished in this time and in this meal, in the fellowship, in the conversations, in the friendships, and in these sessions in order that we may feed your church. To Christ's glory we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.